Hi everyone, welcome to the Matchbook series, which is part of the EBPL podcast. My name is Paul. I'm the adult services librarian here. Usually a Matchbook will cover different topics of books, genres, different subject matter, that kind of thing. But on this episode, I got a question from a patron that diverges a little bit from what we normally do, but it's still close enough to what we actually do here at the library that I thought it was pertinent to the mission of the library and the mission of this podcast that we kind of go through it. So somebody asked for a podcast episode on foreign films. So I figured, why don't we do a little primer on foreign films, most of which the library owns in some version. So why don't we go through that and we'll uh, see if we can't find something you might enjoy. So the first one I wanted to mention is a film called Wild Tales. This is a Spanish language film. It's divided into six vignettes, so it's composed of like six short films that aren't technically related. They all have different characters, but they're all on the same themes about humanity. So it's kind of like an anthology film in that way. And given that the title is Wild Tales, these are composed of standalone shorts, but the themes are very similar. Yes, they're all wild in their own way, but they all touch on similar themes of catharsis, violence, vengeance, themes where people are kind of put into stressful situations with their backs to the wall, and they respond in ways that maybe bring out some of our barbarian instincts. So I'll give a few examples. I don't want to really spoil them, but I want to kind of go into it enough just to show how engrossing that this theme can be and how it takes many different forms like they i think this film succeeds in giving you six short films that are all very different and the themes you don't even really consider them in how similar they are until after you've seen all of the short films together because they all are set in different locations different people from different walks of life that kind of thing So in that way, they're all similar enough and yet different enough to be fresh and inviting. So one of the first ones I want to go into is it's like a pretty normal situation. It's two cars on what seems to be a more rural highway. One car tries to overtake the other. And what ensues is basically a cat and mouse game of one car being like, you're not going to get the upper hand on me it's like this mutual road rage situation where the characters keep going at each other in their cars out of their cars and really what ensues is just these wild instincts coming out where we don't want somebody to have the upper hand on us we don't want somebody to belittle us is kind of the underlying theme of this and it takes all these dark turns that are at the same time very funny as well and you'll see that like this black comedy emerge as a theme of a lot of these short films within Wild Tales. And it plays a lot like a Roadrunner episode of Looney Tunes, but played as a dramatic way. So it's very heightened. It's funny. It takes dark, strange turns, and it has this blend of dark humor and stylized violence that If you're, say, a fan of somebody like Quentin Tarantino, you would really, really love this. In the final vignette in the the series, we open at a wedding and the couple seems very much in love. Picture perfect. Everything is just so. And then things start to go very wrong very fast. There's allegations of adultery. So many family members start crying. It's just tearing families apart. But it all seems the happy couple is very much invested in maintaining this outward appearance of joyous togetherness, all while their lives are imploding in front of all of their guests. And it plays out kind of like a horror movie in that way. But at the same time, like I said about the last one, it's dramatic, but also very funny as well, because they're trying to keep this sense of love and camaraderie while at the same time, everybody could tell that things are falling apart. 
all the vignettes have this sense of style to them. And usually in watching short films, you don't get a good sense of character. There's just not enough time to develop this characterization in so little time. But I feel like this film really does a good job of getting to the heart of these characters in so little time and getting like making you feel who they actually are. So definitely check that one out. Another film I'd like to recommend that, so we don't actually own this film. It's called Headhunters. It's a Norwegian film, actually the most financially successful film in the history of Norway. Like I said, we don't own it, but we do have a copy of the novel that it's based on, which is also called Headhunters. And that's by Joe Nesbo. You might be familiar with his other thriller novels, most of which feature the inspector Harry Hole. This one is a little bit different from that. It focuses on a corporate recruiter who has a double life as an art thief. And he finds out that one of the people he's interviewing for a position is also in possession of a valuable painting that he sets out to steal. The problem is that the person who owns this painting only came in for the job interview because he knows that this man leads a double life as an art thief. So what ensues is very much like a cat and mouse game where loyalties change over time, they're opaque, and you only figure them out at a later time in the film. There's all this double plotting, a double crossing, these changing loyalties, and all of it. What's great about it is that in a lot of mysteries and thrillers, these twists and turns don't always make sense or they feel a little bit too contrived but everything here the behavior of each character why they're siding with some character over another one the elements of human behavior and how it evolves over the course of the film everything makes sense to what would actually happen in this case so i love that like unlike so many two like where the plots are are too outlandish they maybe focus on stunts special effects whatever this is very much plot matters and it's going to take you on a wild ride and you could just sit there and let it happen and enjoy the show but also focus on the details because those matters and even if you don't happen to enjoy this one as much i promise you won't be bored there's just too much happening where <laughs> it's almost impossible to be bored by a film like this so the last two films i'm going to mention today are both on canopy which is a streaming service that if you have an EVPL library card, you will have access to it. It's really a great service. It has a bunch of art house films, documentaries, world cinema, things like that. So it has a lot of really critically acclaimed films that you won't be able to find on other streaming services, such as your Amazon Prime, your Netflix. A lot of these just won't be on it. So that being said, the movie I wanted to recommend is called Breathless. It came out in 1960. And I guess you could call it a little bit of a drama. It's funny at times. It has elements of romance. It's kind of difficult to categorize in a way that's really, I'd say works to its favor, because it's not trying to situate itself within any one genre. So because it came out in 1960, we have our protagonist who smokes a lot of cigarettes, and really tries to affect that he's like some suave criminal. He thinks he's like Humphrey Bogart, which is it's very strange, but also very funny in the film. And he is evading the police. And at the same time, while he's doing that, he's also falling in love with an American student in Paris. So you see the two try to build a relationship over time. And I say try as like the operative word there, because it's apparent over the course of the film that not only are they incompatible with each other, but they'd be incompatible with pretty much anybody because they are so incredibly self-centered and devoid of any empathy for other people and just so recklessly nihilistic and self-centered. And it's amazing to see the two try to build a relationship while still only focused on themselves. It has like the outward appearance of a romantic film, but in a way that comes off as extremely hollow on purpose. 
because it wants to show you how vain the characters are. So if you want a romantic film with none of the romance, I don't know if that's something people watch or enjoy, but it's a really excellent film in that way. Just don't go in expecting the two to live happily ever after, and maybe you'll enjoy it. Now for a film that has the outward appearance to being similar to Breathless, but is actually very different, is one called The Worst Person in the World. This is a more recent film, came out in 2021, also Norwegian, just like Headhunters. And while if I was a young woman named Julie, through four years of her life, from late teenage years through her early adulthood and her just trying to navigate the world. So while Breathless wants to show how vain people could be, this movie really wants to show how much you could really care for other people to the point where you end up not doing what's best for you. And we see the really trials and tribulations of Julie's love life, her career paths, and how the two intertwine and how she is like a fully realized person who's just trying to lead a successful life, do what's best for her, but also forge these meaningful relationships with other people in her life. So you see her make good decisions, bad decisions. She worries about things that normal people worry about. And so the title, Worst Person in the World, is really supposed to be a purposeful exaggeration to show how she gets down on herself so often in the film, and also to show that she is has faults and failings that make her relatable in ways that maybe a lot of other characters in film don't seem to be relatable. A lot of times in films, you're just supposed to either like take a character side or not take the character side. They're supposed to be a good person or a bad person. There's no archetype for Julie. She just seems to be a pretty normal person navigating life the way a lot of us would at that point in our lives. So I think that's where the movie succeeds and what sets it apart from something like Breathless. So again, those last two can be found on Canopy, which you can find on the library's homepage. Thank you for listening. You can find the Matchbook series of the EBPL podcast at ebpl.org backslash podcast. Thank you for listening. And thank you to Melissa Hosek for editing this episode.